Hello everyone. So we're going to continue from class and basically what we did is we set up the foot uh, for the most part going off of this manipulator. And we're going to continue doing that because we have everything moving along. And let me go back here so you could see a little better. The legs moving along with the controller. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some attributes to this controller. To do that, you have to select the controller and you're going to have to do this for the right foot separate from this tutorial. I'm going to briefly do an example, try to keep this short and sweet. And you guys are going to be expected to do that for the other foot. So right here in the channel box is the best way of doing that. You have to apologize. Oh, I have to apologize. Then. My dogs are crazy. So, <clears throat> guys. Okay, all apologies. We're going to go up here to the channel box. Once we have this controller selected, you're going to see that we called it left foot manip. And you can also call it left foot manipulator. I would stick with the naming conventions that are in your notes just because, again, they are going to help you to troubleshoot anything that you need to troubleshoot. So here in the channel box, going to go up to edit and we're going to go down to add attribute. When we click on add attribute with our left mouse button, we're going to get something that looks like this. And this is where we can name our attributes. And the first thing that I want to show you is right here, we have a long name. So whatever you call this is going to be the long name. So if we call this heel rotate, you can abbreviate it with like an R or rot, however you want to do it. We can actually do heel R for rotate. And we can do X. I think in your notes it says heel rot X or something like that. It's okay. These ones are a little more friendly, but I think because of your notes, we should stick with that. So I'll do heel rot X, and <clears throat> that's short for rotate. We want this to be keyable because what we're going to do is we're going to connect these to be able to key the new attributes we make. So how we have like translate and rotate and all that stuff, and we can key these when we're animating. We also want to be able to key these new attributes that we are creating, and they will show up right here in the channel box. So this data type is float. We can leave it to that. And it's going to allow us to have decimals as well as integers. So we don't have to worry about it being whole numbers. We can get real finite animations and such with decimals if we like. We're going to leave this to scholar. We don't really need to get into scholar right now. But we do want to talk about minimum and maximum. We can set a minimum and maximum right here and a default as well. But for this exercise, you guys are going to be testing this. So you want to test the movement of your foot and you're going to want to see if there's an area where it's breaking. So if it goes past, let's say, 45 degrees and it looks like it's an impossible move and the only way to make that move is when you have a broken foot, then you'd want to set a limitation of that by setting a minimum and a maximum for your rotations. Okay. So right now we're not going to do that. I'll show you how to add it afterwards. That way you can test the rotations and see when something is breaking and fix that character by adding a minimum and maximum so that the animator cannot break the foot unless that's going to be a desired effect or the character moves in a different way like robotic, how robots were going to be able to move, at least in my mind, more in a manner that we cannot, we'd have to have broken limbs and such. So in here, if I just go down to the bottom, I'm going to click add, or this time I'll click OK. So we can go through the process one more time. And you're going to see once I click OK, that closes my option box. If I would hit add, it would have simply added this new hill rotate X right here. OK, so what we have here is that this is the naming of the long name that I was talking about. And what it did, Maya automatically separated this for us. So you see the heel space rot, 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 space x. And if we go up to the top here, we can actually show, and let's see here, I gotta find it. It looks like it might be under edit. Yeah, edit down to channel names, and you're gonna see that we have nice, we have long. If I click on long, it's what we put in there. So the nice name is the one that Maya automatically put spaces in there for us. And if I go down to channel name again and I do short, you're going to see that all the other abbreviations 
are going to be in there. We didn't put a short abbreviation for heel rut x, so it has to put this into the long form like we had before. The nice thing about this is that you can actually use some of these to put this in, and if you're doing mouse script, these are ways that you can work with translate x and tell it to do something, or translate y, or scale z, and all that good stuff. Okay, so these are the abbreviations. Maya does accept that, and code does accept that as well. So what I'm going to do here is go up to here, down, like, well, up to edit, down to channel names. I'm going to put this to nice again. That way we can see these a little better. I'm going to add another attribute. There's a list of them in your notes, so make sure that you have your notes. And basically, we're going to go up to edit again to add the next one. And I'm going to go down to add attribute once again. Left mouse button on that bad boy. I don't know why this keeps dropping below, but that's okay. I'll drag it up here so you can see. The next one that I want to add is going to be the heel rotate Y. So in your notes, make sure you guys are referring to your notes. We have heel, heel, rot, Y. The rot, short for rotate. And it's going to be keyable, float, scholar. And let's just see if I'm just going to abbreviate this even further. Get rid of that. Uh, the ROT. And I'm just going to put RY, heel RY. That way you guys can see that it's really going to be up to you how your naming convention is. We'll see it down here now that I do it. I'm just going to leave all the same settings. And I'm going to click Add. Now the nice thing about Add is it leaves this open, but it this option box open for the Add attribute. And what it does is it adds to the channel box what we wanted it to add, the heel RY being the rotate Y. Okay, So it's really up to you if you want to spell the whole thing out. We could always change the name up here, and that's going to be one of the next lessons, is being able to edit these attributes. So you're going to see that we have a bunch of these different attributes. And I will go ahead and pause this recording, and I'm going to come back having all of the attributes on here. So look at your notes, add all the attributes yourself. If you don't have the notes on you for some reason, you can just skip to this next part, and you're going to see that I have them all added on here. So you're going to see that I have all of the attributes added here, and I'll just highlight them. So if you need to pause it at this section and just go off of this, we can add them that way. And what we're going to be worrying about here is now we have to set either limitations and such or um, get these things to work. But before doing that, we need to make connections so that it actually works with the foot. And let me close this. We can make the connections to this because right now we had added attributes, but they do absolutely nothing. So if I were to select one of them, I can't get it to do anything. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and zero this out. But before I go into that next tutorial, I did want to show you that I did do these a little bit differently. So I named each one differently so you guys can see exactly what naming convention is on here and what you might want to go with. So it's really up to you how you want to name these and how it's going to make sense to the animator. You may want to talk to the animator and see what is best for them, depending on the company as well and how they have you do things. But right here, for Hill Rot X, that's one way of doing it. And the other one was Hill RY. So those two we did together a little bit earlier. I did do this other one and just put Hill Rotate Z. So right on here, it took just a few more clicks on the keyboard to get the ATE of the rotate but it is pretty self-explanatory and everybody should be used to either one of these ways especially if they start using your rigs and you have the same naming conventions you should be good okay so right here these three are different I kinda stuck with rotate because you guys are learning this it should help out a little bit better to kinda stick in your mind that you don't have to worry about the abbreviations and how that might throw your thought process off these are pretty self-explanatory again on here for the ball, we're only doing it in one direction. That's the middle of your foot. That's this guy right over here. I'll tap down. And I put rotate Z because this is the Z axis right here. And the Z axis is going to be the only thing that rotates on this character. If your other character can twist its foot in the middle, which I really can't, and uh, us as humans really can't, and this is humanoid. So if it really cannot twist its foot here in the middle, 
then it's going to probably function like ours function. In this case, we can only really move our foot in this manner. So like when you're getting into a runner's pose. And that is the only thing that we have to really worry about for that rotate. So what I did is I just said, okay, so it cut out the, the guesswork for you guys that the ball rotate is rotating on the z-axis. And that's the only reason I put that on there for you guys. So if your notes differ, don't worry about it. It's really up to you. If you want to put it like this on here, this really isn't going to hurt anything in this case, especially since we're not mouse scripting. Um, well, we might go back over with mouse scripting, but I will uh, address this later if that's the case. Okay, but I want to make this plain and clear for you guys, and that's one way to do it. Always test your your objects here that you create. Test any links and stuff. Right now, we do not have any links, but you might want to test it just to make sure we didn't accidentally break something. You don't have to undo and redo something or restart Maya. Okay, so for the next part here, I'm going to show you guys how to make a connection with this so that this controller's attributes, these guys here, are actually going to control the rotation of our joints and the reverse foot setup. So this guy right here, this link, this chain. So for the next one, we will be doing that and we will be moving on from there to kind of finish up the leg. There's a few other things that we have to add. So next is going to be the connections.